So here we have this normal title sequence. It's kind of boring, but bam, we added some accent motion graphics really quick. And that's what we're talking about in this video. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film and welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So this is like a very nice touch to the accent motion graphic tutorials I've done in the past, but this time we're taking it a step further and really stylizing this to kind of give it more of a glowy, retro-y type feel. So there's a lot of uses for this type of motion graphics and how you can quickly enhance your work just within a matter of minutes. So without wasting more time, let's jump into our tutorial and let's talk about a handful of awesome retro based accent motion graphics. All right, so here we are in After Effects, and man, we have a great tutorial today. We're gonna to come into our tutorial composition where we already have a title and a background animation here, very basic, and we wanna take this sequence to the next level, so we're gonna to go to do that right now. So the first thing we need to do is just add a quick accent in here. So I'll show you how to create one really quick. So what we'll do is come here to the Ellipse tool, and we'll uncheck the word fill. So we'll go to fill, click it to none, click okay. Go to stroke, set this to solid, and click okay. And if we want, we can change this to any color we want. So I'll come here, change that color. So I'm going to come here and hold down shift on my keyboard, draw a perfect circle like this, maybe nice and small like so. And we'll increase the thickness by increasing the stroke by a touch here at the top. Excellent. So this is what we have. And we need to animate this. So what we can do to quickly animate this is quickly hit S on our keyboard for scale. We can add a keyframe for it. And before we do that, let's go ahead and control double click the hand behind tool here at the top. So the anchor points in the center and then set the scale down to 0%. And this will animate from right wherever the center of the object is. Then let's actually do an overshoot animation. So we'll go past the second keyframe here. We'll scale this up by a little bit. So maybe like 117, uh, you know, make this keyframe out a little bit further. And then we'll come here to the forward a little bit more and also the scale down to 100%. So this will allow us to create a very quick offshoot animation. And I'll make our first keyframe an easy ease keyframe by hitting F9 and make the last keyframe an easy ease keyframe by hitting F9 on your keyboard. And then just to animate this out, I'll add a keyframe for scale and we'll move forward maybe by a second or so and set the scale down to 0%. So now it'll just be up here and then it'll just go away like so. Great. So we really need to spruce this up. So let's go up to effect, perspective, and let's add drop shadow. Let's change the drop shadow color to our object color and let's set the distance to 15. Let's then duplicate the drop shadow by going to edit, duplicate, and then let's set the softness up to like 130 or so. So you get this little back low here. Then let's go to effect, stylize, and we're going to add glow. Let's come here to the glow threshold and set this down to like 20%. You can see it's a little bit more white. And then let's go to the glow radius. Let's set this up to like 36 and let's increase, decrease the glow intensity. So you get something like this. And maybe let's increase the glow threshold by a little bit more. Get some like original color back in there. That's cool. Then let's go to effect noise and grain and let's just add noise. And let's set the noise up to like 11% and uncheck use color noise. And then of course, let's make sure we turn on motion blur for our circle. All right, so now here's what we have with our circle shape and it looks cool obviously it's by itself so we need to just quickly move this around and create more copies obviously it's very easy to do that and i'm going to your last keyframe and just you know trim up the end point here and so we have so we know exactly how long this you know animation is then we're coming to our accent duplicate it and then we can just quickly move it around our composition duplicate it again move it around duplicate it and we're going to create some very random copies here just by quickly moving things around and just getting a little bit you know crazy with it and you can create as many copies as you want and that's cool then when you have enough copies in here let's go ahead and just offset these in our timeline very randomly so I'm gonna like just move this around within the six second period and we should be good to go and if you want to randomly scale any of these down to create some variation we go up to effect uh, distort and we got transform and we could just scale these down by a little bit and then we just copy the transform and we can just paste these to some random layers here and this allows us to get some variation. All right, so it's all said and done. Now we have a handful of variations of our you know, imploding and exploding circle here. So obviously there's several other accent graphics we're gonna create in this video, but I wanna be able to set up this composition for success now so we can get this out of the way and you can see how awesome this is in its full potential. I'm gonna go up to layer, new adjustment layer. And I'm going to effect, distort, and I'm gonna grab optics compensation. And I'm going to increase this to maybe like 60 and then check on reverse lens distortion. And this is gonna pull like the center of gravity towards us or, you know, kind of distort the composition where the edges 
are a little bit more distorted and it's a really cool effect and we're gonna name this to optics and then i'm gonna go ahead and create another adjustment layer and i'm gonna rename this one to glow and noise and i'm going to effect stylize and i'm gonna grab glow and increase the glow threshold to maybe like 90 percent and then go to the glow radius and perhaps increase this by a touch and then decrease the glow intensity and then i'm going to affect noise and grain and i'm going to add noise and i'll set this to 11 percent as well and then uncheck use color noise nice and then also i'm also going to copy this glow effect and paste it to my title i think that's a really cool effect to do and that just really stands out and then just to finish off this uh you know nice stylized effect without more adding more accents i'm going to grab all of our layers down here in the timeline and go to layer pre-compose and we'll just call this all and great then we'll go to effect channel and we're going to grab shift channels we're going to turn off the green channel to full off and set the blue channel to full off then we'll duplicate this layer set the red to full off and then turn the green back on duplicate this layer turn the green off and set this to blue excellent and then i'm going to toggle switch to the modes until we see the blend mode here and set this uh, the blend mode to screen so we're back to normal and then instead of doing a actual like glitch effect i'm just going to kind of keep the glitch effect up here the entire time so what we can do here is hit here on keyboard for position and just move like maybe the x position by like a few points i went there by four points go to the bottom layer you know we can do like a few more points in the other direction see we get some really interesting looks here go up down doesn't really matter and then maybe to the top layer do it as well and if you want to not make it so intense just make sure they're not offsetted by too much and nice so now we kind of have this nice rgb look here and of course what i would just do is grab all of our layers to scale it in by like one percent you know you don't need to lose that much detail because we didn't do anything crazy nice and before we move on to create more accent motion graphics i want to talk about this motion bro extension that i use to help me save a lot of time and a full after effects package called create pack which has like 3600 elements ranging from like awesome title animations that you can easily apply to any after effects project to lower thirds you know to transitions backgrounds uh, devices and so much more out of this 3000 plus kit so how this extension works is that i can go to one of these many categories preview whatever i'm looking to apply you know whether it's a title a background an infographic but I want to take a look at here, it's called Shape Elements, and I'll go to one of these categories called Shape Lines, and there are pre-made accent motion graphics that I can preview before applying, and there's a handful in both of these packs. And once I find something that I like to use, I can just click on Apply. And I can scale this down, just like anything else that we've created, and just move it around our comp. And now we've applied our own accent motion graphic right here. And what's great about these packs is that the organization is great. So we can lower the stroke width. We can change the colors to whatever we need it to be. And then we can obviously add a handful of other type of accent graphics to our composition within just a few seconds. So if you want to learn more about these packs and the Motion Bro extension, I will drop a link in the description that will take you over to these packs and you can take a look at all the thousands of elements within the Motion Bro extension. All right, so we're back in our other composition here, and I'm gonna show you how we can create some other quick accents really quick uh, and produce some cool work. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off all of our uh, current accents so we have some room to work with here. And what I'm gonna do is gonna come here and I'm gonna grab the polygon tool. And I'm gonna hold down shift on my keyboard, draw that perfect polygon, that's fine. Then I'm gonna come here to polystar one, go to the polystar path one and set the number of points to six. And I'm going to decrease the stroke here at the top, that's fine. And I'm going to come here at the beginning of our timeline and go to add and add trim paths. I'm going to open up trim paths and I'm going to set the end to 0%. Add a keyframe for start. I'll move forward maybe by a second or so and set this to 100%. And then go back by a few frames, add a keyframe for end, move forward by like another second and set the end to 100%. So now we'll have like this snake sort of animation here. And that's cool. Of course, let's make the last keyframe easy ease and make the first keyframe easy ease as well. And then let's grab the polystar by itself and let's duplicate it. Go to the bottom layer, go to transform polystar and then just scale this up by a little bit. And then we can lower the stroke width since we scaled it up. We'll duplicate it one more time. Go to the bottom layer and we'll scale this up. And we'll bring that stroke width. Nice, awesome. And then we can hit U on keyboard to bring up the keyframes and then we can offset you know, each set just by a little bit. So we'll get something like this and that's cool. And let's make sure our layer is selected and we can come here to the top and we can change our color. 
Excellent. Then I'll come back here, grab our original effects, I'll select all four of them, copy them, and we'll paste them to our new layer. And we can come here and change our drop shadow color. Nice, and if we want, we can turn off, say, the first layer here, so we can just have a glow effect if you don't want to have like that very thick, you know, three-dimensional look. That's up to you, or we can bring the distance in. I'll bring them in to like maybe five. And renames layer to hexa one. Okay, and I'll recolor this to like uh, sea foam or something. And now just with our, you know, hexagon animation here, here's what we have everything scattered across our composition. So it just, you know, very nice touch of animation to create some nice, you know, retro style accent motion graphics. And yeah, that looks really cool uh, combined with our other graphics here. So let's go ahead and create like one more style here just to finish this off to put the icing on the cake. So this next one, we'll actually go back to the ellipse tool and we'll go to click on the word fill, set this to solid color and click OK. And we'll turn off stroke, click OK. And maybe this time we'll do something like in the world of like orange. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I'll we'll come here and I'll draw out a perfect circle like this. It can be nice and small. We're gonna create an array of circles. So what I'm gonna do is come here to begin our timeline for ellipse one. Uh, go to transform ellipse one and we'll add a keyframe for scale. We'll move this forward by a little bit and set the scale down to 0%. So we got this animation here, okay. Okay, cool. And then we'll come here and we'll duplicate our ellipse one. And then we'll click on the word contents, go to add, and we're gonna add a merge paths. We'll open up merge paths and we'll set this to subtract. Then we'll hit U on keyboard to bring up our keyframes. We'll go to our bottom set of keyframes and we'll offset these in time by a little bit. So now you have this. So now you have the circle that kind of just pops up and implodes it's on its own so we'll come here maybe take it the last keyframes out a little bit longer so we'll kind of spread these keyframes out by a little bit so this will be up here for maybe like two seconds and then it'll close up on itself and with the proper you know use of keyframes you know this can be up here for maybe like a second and a half and then let's make the last keyframe easy ease and the first keyframe easy ease so i want to be able to set this into an array so i'll close all these up click on the word contents and let's go to add and let's add a group and let's grab our lips, our merge paths, and the stroke and fill, and put that in our group one. Nice. Then we can come here and duplicate our group one, and then we can actually move this around. Duplicate it again. Duplicate once more. And we'll put this here. Nice. So we just have this quick little animation here, and nothing too fancy, and that's all I wanted. I'll rename this layer to Array Circle. And now with all three of our elements added together, we should have a composition like this, and it's up to you how you want to spread these around your comp. But obviously we have a lot of details in here, and obviously the sky is also the limit with you know creating our own shapes and also taking a look at the Motion Pro extension, whether you're using Create Pack or Toka, which you know obviously have thousands of other elements other than you know accent motion graphics. So just a lot of cool techniques to make your work pop within a very short amount of time. So and if you're in the saving time like me, I will drop those links in the description to check out Toko and Create Pack. Uh, be sure to check those links in the description. So those are just a few styles of creating retro type accent motion graphics right inside of After Effects. And you can see how quickly it can be used to enhance your scenes. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and a little bit of fun. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description. And always, be creating.